be brave, look forward, and take, take the next step. Welcome to Fending America. I'm on a 13,000 mile road trip to meet Finnish Americans and figure out why they want to be here and learn about cultural differences. You'll meet exciting Finns and hear about their journeys in America. In this episode, we're in cloudy Washington state. To be more exact, Seattle. It's been raining and cloudy ever since I left San Francisco and California. Man, I miss it already. It almost feels like being back in Finland, rainy and cloudy. But I'm super excited I finally got to see Seattle. So far, it's been quite of a rough drive already. I haven't slept that much, but I made progress on my trip and I'm hitting my deadline. But I've kept my head up high, slept okay, and headed up. I started from Orange County to Palo Alto to San Francisco, and now I'm in Seattle. This interview was great for many reasons, but one specifically being that the newly built Nordic Museum gave us a chance to have the interview in one of their rooms. As well as the next day, I got to go visit and film a lot of B-roll. There's so many cool heritage items and stories on these walls that I highly recommend going to this museum if you happen to be in Seattle. And I think Finnair actually flies direct now from Helsinki. Just a thought. Oh, before we get on with the show, it would mean the world to me and it would help me creating content like this in the future if you could subscribe, smash the like button and maybe share this with a friend. See you next time. Matti. For someone who's never heard of you, how would you introduce yourself? I'm Matti Suokko. I live in the, in the great Pacific and the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Uh, my day job is at Microsoft. I'm a principal program manager and uh, uh, a lead for our ecosystem effort in Azure Mobility. I'm also the honorary consul of Finland. I'm a dad of, of you know, now grown kids. I'm many things, but those are the, the main things that I usually introduce myself with. How did you originally come to America? I actually came straight from the university. I, I never graduated. That's actually a big admission. I never, I, I don't have any degree after high school. Wow. So one thing leading to another, and that's been my whole life. Um, it, I ended up here as an intern back in 1992. Went back to Finland for one winter. Uh, liked this place so much that I, I you know, was looking for another opportunity to become an intern here. And I stayed. Uh, one thing leading to another. That was with Microsoft back then, 93, when I came as an intern. Worked my butt off just to, you know, uh, uh, just a little bit of strategy there to take. Maybe they would extend my internship, which happened. Um, and then Microsoft hired me full time. So the rest is history. Is there other reasons besides your work that why you specifically want to stay in the Pacific Northwest? This was the place that I first got to and I haven't found a single reason to move and, and live anywhere else. I love this this part of the country. There's nature, there's, there's so many things to do here. Um, and I'm a very, you know, my, my hobbies, my interests are way quite, you know, wide and, and far reaching and I enjoy nature in, in, in almost all forms. So I, I kind of love where, where, you know, center of gravity of Seattle where you can do everything. You touched on this a little bit. So would you talk about your hobbies a little bit? What do you do on your free time? There, there are people who are, who are, who go deep in one area, one or two areas. And I'm, I'm one of those people that, you know, I go <laughs> wide. If you want to pick themes, it's nature. I, I love hiking, I've climbed mountains. I've done that also around the world a little bit, and and this where there's really a, no better place for for hiking and mountains than the Pacific Northwest. I think my my hobbies are, are then either centered around nature or or motorcycles and and other motorized vehicles. I, I ride snowmobiles, ride motorcycles. I am a home mechanic. I I enjoy you know, as much as riding. I enjoy working on the bikes and and other vehicles, and I just you know everything to do with my hands really some 10 years ago I think I, I took on and I I was uh, um, I bought a shotgun and I was shooting trap you know uh, I that that interests me for for a while and then I moved on to something else but you know the trends are that I I, I enjoy you know all, all sorts of riding getting lost in the <laughs> myriad of forest service roads in the backcountry and going camping with the bike yeah it's just my way of getting away from the crowded uh, uh, city life, so gives you a good work-life balance, and that's exactly what it is. 
Yeah. How important is work-life balance? Because you're you're heavy into corporate, corporate Microsoft. So how, how do you deal with that? That's a tough one. Um, I, I try my best. And, and now that we've been in this pandemic, we work from home. It, it's been super challenging. It's easy to stick with the computer for, you know, basically all, all day long. I found these these different, you know, hobbies take you away. In the wintertime, I love skiing, and that was actually something that I did last last season a lot. I mean, I think I skied the most day, days in my whole life last season. Do you have any pet peeves in America? Not really. Um, I could say, hey, I don't like this, I don't like that, but it's the same thing in, in every society. There's like things that might not work optimally for you. Uh, for me, I, I try to, to kind of adjust to, to, you know, hey, this is the American way of doing things. I was born, raised in Finland, and 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 certain things are done very differently, in, in back in Finland versus the U.S. And I, I it just, there's there's really no reason to to compare and con contrast more than, hey, I come with a different perspective maybe on some things. Do I have pet peeves? Well, we could still fix the banking system for it, and we could fix you know a lot of these things that are, are working way different in back in the Nordic region in, in general. I don't think I want to want to point to flaws, but rather look at, OK, is there a way for me to contribute to, you know, maybe bringing a new perspective, new idea? And that applies to personal, that applies to, to business. The home is here. This is I, I'm originally from Finland, but uh, where I'm from right now is, is Bellevue, Washington. How do you define success? Essentially, to me, it's like I, I can I can meet the goals that I set for myself. Because you know, if I measure my what I call success to somebody else's success, I think it's a very different thing. That's I, I guess the best definition that I can give, because it, it really is is so subjective. It is what I set my sight on that I, I aim to do and I want to do, what I want to accomplish. And am I successful in doing that? At work, I actually talk about many victories and when, we, when I work with my team. And it's not this like we're trying to reach this big, big giant goal at the end, boil the ocean. It's, it's celebrating the mini victories. And that's what I try to do also in my personal life, that's celebrating the mini victories and successes uh, along the way. And they can go from, grow from very, very small things in life to, to larger things in life. So it really depends on, on you know, what the goal is, what the objective is. And, and then, you know, success come, comes with it as a, as a definition. And then on a country, how do you deal with, how do you define failure? Failure is, I'd like to, stay away from that type of uh, um, vocabulary. It's, it's, if, if nothing else, it's learning. If you don't succeed on something, it's not a failure. It's a way to learn and say, hey, why didn't this happen? Am I, can I recalibrate, do something else? Because failure means that you, you did something, you failed, you, you stopped, you're not trying again. Um, and there's instances that you, you can try again. Uh, but it, it, I, I'd rather look at it from the learning and recalibrating and, and retrying than considering something as a just failure. I think there's a quote that I, I read somewhere once that um, a failure is only a failure if you didn't learn anything from it. That's right. And, and that's a beautiful way of Absolutely right. looking at it, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you consider yourself lucky? No. I consider myself extremely unlucky. And there's one, one reason for that. I lost one of my children three and a half years ago. Uh, Nico was 18. He was, like me, enjoying the, the beautiful mountains here, and he died, unfortunately, in, a, in an avalanche accident. So in that sense, I'm considering myself very unlucky. There's not too many adults who, who lose their, you know, younger, younger uh, children. It just goes in the wrong order. Yeah. Throws you completely off for the rest of your life. Basically, you know, are, are forced into this club that you never wanted to join. And basically, you know, parents who lost their, their children. What we've done is that one of the circumstances that really led to this very tragic accident was there were two young men, um, two, two boys who ventured out into the backcountry against advice they were given, even though educated in avalanche, 
dangers and, and avalanche safety. Um, but we believe that the, the sort of invincibility at that at the age of 18, um, 17, 18, sort of overpowered the two very athletic boys that wanted to conquer the hill that they were not supposed to conquer. I'm a co-founder of Nico Foundation. It's, a, it's an organization that's mission is to build a, a curriculum and, and a program to address these specific types of issues when it comes to snow safety and, and working in, in a group environment. Um, it's not replacing what's out there and that's typically built for adults. What we're trying to do is completely different, different approach and, and approach it from the, the, the sort of youth mindset uh, perspective and we're actually happy to have had two seasons of uh, pilot programs uh, not just in Washington state but in, in a couple other states and we're going to roll it out um, someday I think the ProNico program might be worldwide um, that's something is it's it's a kind of a my startup that I was you know driven to to um, to work on and and uh, again we're, we're really pushing forward this season again with a number of classes and, and hope to get a, a very healthy number of youth through that program and we can, we can really impact the, the snow safety um, within that sort of youth, youth age range. We just know that there's more and more kids are better equipped and they have their own cars, they, they, they go out, even the ski resorts and the backcountry, side country yeah. um, on their own. And that's exactly the same kinds of dangers, you know, are there in, in many different ways. The, uh, the tree wells as, as the one of the things that, you know, there's so much snow that, you know, the tree branches cover the, the, the trunk and there's basically a well that you can, you know, basically disappear for the rest of the winter. Uh, nobody knows that you actually dipped in there. So the tree wells and, and the avalanches and other dangers. So it's really something that we're trying to address through the um, kind of a new approach. So Matti, what do you think makes Finnish people unique, if anything? I don't think we're unique. I, I think there's, there's a setup where we're bringing maybe a different perspective. We're unique in, in that sense that we might bring a rather unique perspective but so does somebody else who comes from a different background and, and, you know, the society maybe works slightly different. I think that's how we're in, you can, you can define us a unique, but I always think about us being able to bring a, a perspective into an equation, like we're, we're trying to do that here in, in Seattle area. We're here at the, uh, the National Nordic Museum in the, amidst the, the birch trees. And, and this is one way that we Nordics are, are you know, attempting to bring the Nordic perspective, the Nordic way into this, this American society here. What does it mean to be Finnish to you? I think for me, Finnish is, is really where I come from and, and certain values that um, I was brought up with and the language. I use my Finnish language every single day. I've been able to preserve it quite well, you know, considering that I've been here 30 yeah. years. Yeah, I, I think it's the, the values, the ways of thinking, the ways of doing, the ways of living is 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 my Finnishness. And I, you know, my friends would probably call me one of the most Finnish guys around because I, I never really left that Finnishness behind. I've gone more more towards the being American. Finnish to me means my my roots, values, and ways ways of living. How do you keep Finnish traditions going on in your family and, and making sure that you're, because I'm assuming all your kids were born here. It, it's the language yeah. and it is maybe certain, you know, Finnish holidays that the way they're celebrated. Um, uh, and, and it's also keeping the ties to the country itself. Going back there, my my kids, you know, learned Finland and, and you know, through their you know numerous trips to Finland during our, our vacation that's the that's a curse actually being a Finn here living overseas because you're kind of obligated to spend every single break every back in the home country the, especially the kids are young you know yeah. the grandparents and all that so you know you, you don't really get to experience what's around you yeah. um, and actually that that's been something that I've done more and more now <laughs> that you know grits, kids are grown and and you know uh, they're a bit of their own own as well to really, you know, kind of broaden the horizons here locally or, or travel locally. I think it, it's net net, it's it's the language and then bit of that, that sort of, you know, that still physical connection to the country. Do you have an American dream? 
My American dream, I think, is is here and right now.、Mm. I think I'm living my absolute American dream. I, what I do for work, where I live, or how things are from that perspective.、Mm-hmm. I, I think, if you want to define one as such, then and I'm living it right now. Work is work. You work somewhere else, and you might be living your your you know being your dream job. I'm in my dream job right now, and I'm I'm super lucky in that sense. You asked me about luck earlier. I want to say that I'm I'm lucky to be able to get to that point in my career. And I think that 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 way, since I'm living my life here in America, I、yeah. guess you call it American dream. Would you be able to explain to Americans kind of the culture of support networks? Because one of my favorite things in America is how supporting people are in general. And and they're very. If you have an idea that you want to do, most people will always say, "That's great. That's good for you. I'd, I'd love to see it as it comes along, or let me know if you need any help." When a lot of times in Finland, that's not the the, the general culture. I think it's changing now with the new new、uh, generations. They're more into doing stuff as groups. But we do have sayings like, "A Finn will pay fifty dollars so that your neighbor doesn't get a hundred." I I think it's. Again, just cultural difference, as you、mm-hmm. said it.、Um, I I think there's Finns would probably nowadays wish you well equally, but here also you gotta tone your ear a little bit when say, hey, you know, I'll, great job, you know, let me know if you need any help. That person doesn't mean that they're offering their their concrete help to you. I would call them somewhat of the the sort of.、Uh, You know promises that have nothing behind them, right? It doesn't mean that everybody's meaning that. That they, you know, that they're only saying it. There's a lot of people who are willing to go into the deep end of the pool to to really help you out. But I, I think traditionally, you're absolutely right that there people are being more sort of、uh, leaning forward here as far as you know、uh, helping you or you know sort of or, or giving you the the extra push to to you know go go after your dreams. I think that's just the way of life here again, different than what what we've had in in Finland. Being an entrepreneur is is way different still, I think, here than back in Finland. Especially when you talked about we talked about failures earlier. You know, if if you know the business doesn't su- su- succeed in Finland, is often seen as a failure. And here, it's it's hey, you did your best, you tried. What are you going to do now? What's your next thing? And and so and again, it's an it's a it's an approach difference from you know where the the you know entrepreneur here is seen as a something that they they it, it's it's a brave thing to do, putting their heart and soul into something, and and people obviously want to wish them well and much success. There's really much less of maybe that what you're getting to a jealousy, and, and again, I, I think comes from the history. If you think of the Finnish society, it's it's very homogeneous. I mean, le- you know, flat, right? Very few ultra-rich, traditionally very very few、um, uh, ultra-poor. Here's plenty, right? Even in the back in the old days, and you know, in the, the the more recent times, you know, that has started to happen in Finland as well, especially the ultra rich. But here, it's it's even richer, right? It's okay. Not everybody will have an equal amount of wealth. What I'm still really sad is that we still have the ultra poor in this country, though. The discrepancy between the ultra rich and you know, poor is just too too deep. And it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger, and and, and there's a systemic issue here because we we really need to help the people who are falling through the through the cracks and you bring them back because you know there there's still people there who want you know if, if you really gave them the right tools and right means and right environment they they would potentially most of them come back. Do you have any tips on how Finns should adapt to when they do business in America and deal with Americans because of the cultural differences, or do you think we can be pure Finnish and direct? Well, so there's two elements: be genuine, be you. But of course, you know the rules of engagement, you know business engagements, you know that are are in place in Finland don't apply here. That this again. You know, you have to sort of play by the the rules of here. You know, of here. It really is is building those trusted relationships. In Finland, it's such a small country 
that, you know, it's only one hop away to get to nearly anybody. And there's that inherent trust element there. It, it's something that you have to build here. It really takes a, a lot of presence, a lot of legwork. Do your homework, be active, be, be you know, leaning forward, connect. It's that building the network. Uh, it, and again, it's taking one step to, to open the ne next door and so forth. Like you're working here through this, this, this uh, a series is, you know, one, one door leads to another. And that's exactly the how, how things can be done here without, you know, spending massive amount of money. It's really the courage to, to come here it needs to be sort of a, a conscious thing. You can't just deal with the American market or Finnish companies or Finnish entries here with the left, left hand. It needs to be sort of an all-in. The rewards can be quite, uh, uh, quite rewarding. Within your corporation, how do you define success as a as a leader? Microsoft, we we really have our sort of commitments that we individually write for. You know, what what is my commitment for this next six months or the next twelve months? They center around priorities that are categorized in a way that what's what's really the business objectives me as a individual and and every employee in the company need to reflect the certain values in their everyday work um, which is you know how do i build on, on on work of others and the other thing is like how, how do i help others succeed you know uh, how do i exhibit diversity in my in my work those are some of the most powerful things that we we expect from every single employee and, and we craft our commitments around those principles. If, even if you do rock solid work, you do amazing things, but you live a whole bunch of bodies around and a lot of chaos and conflict, that's not good. It really is, you know, how do we grow, learn? How do we, you know, again, learn from our mistakes? And again, that's the other thing that I want to touch on that failures as you brought up, you know, what is a failure? You know, how do you deal with them, you know, or, or something like that? It really, there is a no failure. We, we learn from them. And, and we've also encouraged in, in our organization at Microsoft to, to really people to take risks and, and do what they, they feel is the right thing to do without the fear of, hey, if this doesn't work out that I, I will be, you know, there's something negative out of it. We just can't make the same mistakes twice. Yeah. Uh, we learn and we, we really kind of push the envelope. We try to do the right thing Again, from, from with the customer mindset, um, a growth mindset, and the customer perspective, I think those are very healthy principles. And again, that sort of guides our our work. My personal addition to this that we celebrate many victories. What are concrete steps that I need to do uh, to be in a position that you are in, for example, in five years? Follow your own path. Be active. Be genuine. Be be curious. Have have faith that you know things will pan out. You know, one one baby step at a time. Work towards your your objective, your goal. Again, be authentically you. I think those are some of the sort of a building blocks and ingredients to to what you would then define success. Matti, word associations. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. First word, blue. Sky. White. Snow. Sauna. Good. Sisu. Tradition. Black. Night. Green. Grass. Coca-Cola. Um, I like it too much. <laughs> the Matrix. Movie. Finland. Me. Love. Ooh. That's all I have. <laughs> and what do you have to say to the next generation of Finnish people? Be brave, look forward, and take, take the next step.